My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my God and Angel, intercede for me. When you hear the word vocation, what comes to our mind immediately? Most likely, when you think about a priest, he received the vocation to the priesthood and he responded yes to that call from God. Or we think about a nun or a friar. She or he has also received the vocation to the religious life and she or he res- responded yes to that call from God. Or perhaps we can also think about a missionary who, having received the vocation to dedicate his or her entire life in this marvelous adventure, has left the family, the profession, or the country to go wherever the higher authorities will have assigned this missionary to. And these are authentic vocations in the church because it is you, Jesus, who have called them to dedicate their entire lives to the service of your mystical body in their assigned roles. And Jesus, without them, especially the priests, the church cannot function because it is through the priests that the sacramental graces are dispensed within the church for the sanctification of souls. But what about the rest of the members of the church? The married people, the manual workers, students, physicians, engineers, musicians, garbage collectors. Jesus, did you also call them? Did they also have a vocation? In today's gospel, we're going to hear about a scribe who approached you and asked, said to you, Teacher, I'll follow you wherever you go. Who or what was a scribe in Jesus' time? The scribes are the ones who drew up legal documents. They copied the Old Testament scripture and devoted themselves to the study of the law and the determination of its applications on daily life. They also studied the scripture with respect to doctrinal and historical matters. In other words, they were equivalent to the present day lawyers and or notaries. Lord, what a wonderful thing it is to contemplate this scene. Here is a scribe, a Jewish lawyer, who approached you and told you that he wanted to follow you, become your disciple, and dedicate his entire life helping you achieve your heavenly mission. Surely, he must have felt that you were calling him to follow you. Surely, he must have been convinced that he received the vocation from you. But he was not a priest or a Pharisee or a Sadducee, who pride themselves in having received the vocation to be a priest, or a Pharisee, or a Sadducee from God. But a scribe, although he enjoyed a good standing in the Jewish society, was well regarded by the people, was not a priest, or a Pharisee, or a Sadducee. Yet, Jesus, here is a scribe, who sure of his vocation, wanted to commit himself entirely to you, because said to you that he'll follow you wherever you go. Now, this is quite a commitment, which one does not take lightly. It must come from the very depths of one's being. So Jesus, his example of what a vocation really means, a scribe, a professional man, immersed in his ordinary life, felt a strong desire to live his life with a changed outlook. Until this man met you, felt a call coming from you to follow you, he was sort of minding his own business, as it were, a pious Jewish man, a good and honest man, diligent in his work, being mindful of the needs of others, and so on. But now, Jesus, when you turned your penetrating gaze towards him, and he met yours, he felt deep in his heart that you are calling him to follow you. What a moment of great thrill and excitement there must have been to follow Jesus, the Messiah. Many years ago, when St. John Paul II was asked about what a vocation is, he replied by saying that it's a dialogue between us and Christ. He went on to say that in the hidden recesses of the human heart, the grace of a vocation takes the form of a dialogue. It's a dialogue between Christ and an individual in which a personal invitation is given. Christ calls the person by name and says, 
Come, follow me. This call, this mysterious inner voice of Christ, is heard most clearly in silence and prayer. Its acceptance is an act of faith. Lord Jesus, we think about this wonderful description given by St. John Paul II in today's 10 minutes of dialogue with you as we continue our prayer. What is striking about the reference to the scribe in today's gospel is that you, Jesus, are calling all of us, all the baptized souls, and not just the priests or the religious or the missionaries, to follow you the radical commitment. There's no exception in the discipleship of Christ. There's no such thing as belonging to you, Jesus, only part-time. I'm either really fully committed to you, or not at all, really. And this is so important, Jesus. We, all of us, belong to you. Belonging to you, we must strive to live our lives in the world with a deep vocational sense of life. What is this vocational sense of life? Fundamentally, it means that whatever state in life or profession we exercise, or hobbies and interests we pursue, all that should be carried out as a following of you, Jesus. Yes, following you, because it is in and with you, in living with your grace, that I continue to discover that I'm not alone, that you are with me, that you are in me. Yes, Jesus, it means that I share my life with you as you share yours with me. We are united, we are together in thoughts, desires, and actions. Then St. Paul reminded us to the Christians in Corinth when he said to them, each person should remain in the situation they were in when God called them. Were you a slave when you were called? Don't let it trouble you, although if you can gain your freedom, do so. For the one who was a slave and called to faith in the Lord is the Lord's freed the person. Similarly, the one who was free when called is Christ's slave. You're bought at a price. Do not become slaves of human beings. Brothers and sisters, each person is responsible to God should remain in the situation they were in when God called them. Yes, Jesus, we are called, and every one of us have received a vocation, each in his his or her current state in life, to live fully the Christian vocational sense of our life. Like Margaret, who is a graduate of MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and who is a mother of eight children. When she discovered the vocational sense of her life, she described it in this way. I think it really helps in a lot of ways. For one thing, being a homemaker is associated with a lot of drudgery, and rightly so. It's a pure drudgery, laundry. You wash the same things over and over again and over again. You fold them and put them away, and the kids get them dirty, and they get back in the laundry again. And I wash the same dishes every night. They get dirty again. I have to wash them again. And they get put away again. And I spend two hours cooking a meal. Twenty minutes after it's been put on the table, it's all gone. It really is hard work, a lot of work. And if I did not have a deeper meaning to it, I'd probably be insane by now. The fact that it does, thank God, have this deeper spiritual meaning to it. It makes all the difference. I'm washing dishes for God. I'm changing diapers for God. Yes, Jesus, that's it. As Margaret says, the Christian vocational sense of all that she does is precisely what gives her the real, the true, lasting sense of her daily routine. How happy she must have been when she discovered it. So they didn't send so who is a textile maker in Italy, who has worked in this field for more than 30 years. After he discovered the vocation sense of his life, things changed dramatically. He gave the following testimony. I started with some more basic things, like, like not cursing, a habit many tradesmen and workers have. I also tried to deal with people in a more positive and pleasant way. and I noticed that our Lord was helping me. Now I find it easier and I enjoy welcoming the apprentices who begin working in our business. And I try to help them grow in their Christian outlook, although I'm never sure of the results of my efforts. He continued, saying that because of the Lord's presence in my life, because I've discovered my Christian sense, 
vocational sense of my life. I'm so happy now, working every day, the Lord's business. Yes, my business, Lord's business. Yes, Jesus, that's it. To live our Christian vocation in our daily routine, the profound vocational sense of what it means to be a Christian, to be a disciple, your follower. Jesus, I do want to follow you wherever you go. Help me never lose this vocational sense of my Christian identity. Virgin Mary, my mother, we turn to you as you're about to finish these short minutes of our dialogue with your, with your son Jesus, asking you to help us to imitate you as you lived your earthly life with the, the utmost and profound vocation sense of a daily routine. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me.